I forgot to say happy Cinco de Mayo. Yes. The uh, Bountiful Bees will have us. Thank you. <laughs> After service, Bountiful Bees will have a special Cinco de Mayo treats in the social hall. So you want to join us over there for fellowship this morning. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it very much. Let's all take a breath together. You know, every first Sunday of the month, I say the same thing. Can you believe it's May already? <laughs> These months are just rolling along and rolling along and rolling along, and here we are, and it's May already. And when we have our staff meetings, there are different things that, that Nicole tells me for different Sundays. And when she told me that today was the first Sunday and it's birthday Sunday, I was like, didn't we just do that last week, <laughs> two weeks ago? She's like, no, we did it the first of the month. So <laughs> But it just keeps, keeps going along, keeps going along. So here we are, a new month. We have a new theme. The theme this month is passionate service. <laughs> How do you like that one? Passionate service. Not just service. Passionate service. And so that's the energy you want to bring to it whenever you say the word passionate. Passionate service. That's what we're looking at this month. And knowing that in keeping with our theme for the year, dwelling in the land of plenty, we have to, we can't dwell in the land of plenty without service. And if we're going to provide service, we've got to do it passionately. And we also know that service is one of our seven sacred practices here uh, at CLF. And so we've been going through, in our going back to basics, we've been going through each practice and really spending some time, spending a full month on whatever that particular practice is. This month, our practice is service. It's seva. And what seva means, seva is a Sanskrit word that means selfless service. It means selfless service. Service without regard to or without concern for outcome, without expectation of reward. Service for the sake of service. And service is taught to be, in many, in many traditions, the greatest spiritual practice, the most important spiritual practice is service. And so we will be looking at service throughout this month, different ways to give service, to provide service. And we want to really delve deeply into how can I serve? How can I serve? The uh, book that I've been looking at that I recommend to you, but I don't speak from books usually, but this is How Can I Help? by Ram Das and Paul Gorman. It's in the bookstore for your reading enjoyment. Uh, if you'd like to take a look at that by purchasing it in the bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> but how can I serve is the question. Because service is about oneness. Service is about love. Service is about giving of ourselves, giving of our our entire beingness to God, to others. And it's distinguished from helping because helping is about doing things for others. Let me back up a minute. Service is about equality. It's about recognizing that those whom we serve are our equals. Helping is about inequality because when we're helping, it's because we feel superior to, in some way, either with our skills, our abilities, our thoughts, our know-how, or whatever, there's, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, 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 a separation there when we're dealing with helping that isn't there when we're dealing with service. When we come from a consciousness of love, a consciousness of oneness, a consciousness of service, of selfless service, we aren't thinking of ourselves, but we're just thinking of that connection that we have with those whom we serve. And when we get into that connection, it, 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 it eradicates any sense of separation. It eradicates any sense of otherness. It eradicates any sense of them and us, or you and me, it's just we. It's just I. It's just that, that, that I that, that, that's a part of the I am consciousness. And so that's what service is all about. 
oftentimes people think of services is, and when we're helping people, it's, again, like I said, we have some gift to share or to give that the other person doesn't have. So it, it kind of makes an unequal situation. Whereas in service, it's just for the benefit of us all. Yes, I have this gift and I'm sharing it with you and I'm sharing it with the community and I'm sharing it with the world, not because I know more, I, I am more, I have more. It's because we are all a part of the whole. And so the way that we serve shows up as wholeness. We recognize that, that we are all a part of the whole and my service, my gifts, my talents, my skills complete the circle of wholeness. And so that's how we want to look at service as we go through this month, as we go through our lives. Oftentimes people think of service as fixing a situation or fixing something for somebody. Fixing implies brokenness. And that's not what service is. Service is again about wholeness. There's nothing to be fixed. It's just about opening ourselves up to allow that power and that presence that resides within me to, to, to serve itself in you and in this community. And so that's what we are looking at this month for, how can I serve? That's going to be our constant question throughout the month, throughout our lives, really. When we wake up in the mornings, how can I serve this day? And as I, as I look at this book, I'm surprised that, that I was surprised that the name being How Can I Help? And initially I was, I was a little taken by. I read it a few years ago. But we just, use diff it's, we just use different language, but it's the same thing. It's the same idea of giving of ourselves, of moving into that place of oneness, of moving into that place of love, and recognizing that love is always seeking expression. Love is always seeking a place to express. And so when we know that to be the truth, then we are seeking a place to express the love that, that comes through us according to our own uniqueness, our own talents, our own skills, or whatever it is that we have to share and to, uh, however it is that we serve. If you're wondering how you can serve, that's what takes us to the passion. That's what takes us to passion. Passion is defined as a strong emotion or the strongest emotion uh, that brings up uh, uh, issues like joy and love or hate and anger and all those kinds of strong emotions that we have, we have things that we are passionate about, things that we put our heart and soul into. Those are the things that, that, that we all have, that we're passionate about, things that we feel like we couldn't live without doing them. And if you're wondering what your passion is, what is it that really speaks to your heart? What is it that you really crave to do? What is it that, that, that you really thirst for, you really hunger for? What is it that you, you would really regret leaving this planet without having done it? What is it that really floats your boat? What is it that really floats your boat? What is it that really speaks to you, that really makes, you, makes your heart sing? And it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's a big thing. We think of service as doing big things out in the world and, and, and really making a big difference out in the world. But it's the little things that we do that make a difference. It's the little things that unite us. It's the little things that, that, that hold it all together. The little things we do on a daily basis, on a moment-by-moment on a, on a -moment basis, that touch the lives of others as well as touching our own lives. And that's how we get involved in service and that's how we get involved in passionate service. And so asking yourself, what is it that I'm really passionate about? What is it that I really, really, really would do for free? What is it that I would do for free? What is it that, that makes me feel so good because I'm able to help somebody else? I'm able to assist somebody else. I'm able to support somebody else. I'm able to allow all that I am to come into this act that I do. And when we look around here in this community at people who serve here, we see that. We see service in action all the time. We see love in action all the time. I was thinking about Yvonne Franchek, who was our, our, our volunteer of the month this month, uh, last, this of the quarter, this quarter. Uh, I, 
there was a description of her that she, she loved cleanliness so much and how she cleans the kitchen and cleans the tables. And Miss, she's Miss Sparkle, thank you. <laughs> Who's, you know, that's what passion is all about. And, and we wouldn't think of that as being a big thing because it's, it's a little thing, but how it serves all of us. Because if she didn't do that, uh, who would? And who would do it in the way that she does? Who would do it in the way that she, give it in the way that she gives? Who would serve in that way? But that's what our passion is. And you know what? Wherever our, whatever our passion is, there's a spiritual quality seeking expression behind that. The spiritual quality behind that for Yvonne, one of them has to be order. Because she has that passion, because that, that spiritual quality is seeking to express through her, then, then she allows it to play out by her service here in this community, and I'm sure she does it in other ways also. There are so many other people, I just, I thought about Yvonne, but there's so many other people, all of us here, who have ways that we serve passionately. Who on earth would think that Rick does not ser uh, serve as an usher passionately? <laughs> so, <laughs> He's a passionate usher. He gives passionate service. And Leah, in, 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 in the kitchen with the Bountiful Bees, she's passionate about preparing food and serving us. Oh, yeah. And Fran, with her, 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 her animal, love of animals, and how she gives to this community that way, and so many other ways. And I hate, I'm so sorry I started naming people because that means I <laughs> leave, <laughs> that means I leave a whole, a whole group out, but there's a whole bunch of us that all of us who have ways that we really, really, really give passionate service. And that's how we serve God. That's how we move into that place of oneness. That's how we remember who we really are. That's how we remember that all of us are of the same one, that all of us are on the same road, all of us are on the same path. And all of us are here to connect with each other and to uplift each other. And in doing those little things, those little acts of service, those little things that we can do, that's how we can grow, we can expand, we are blessed, and we can be blessings wherever we go. And so I invite you to look at how can I serve this day? As I said, what is that really speaks to my heart? What is that really speaks to my heart? And you may have to spend some time thinking about that. What is it that I just really enjoy doing? What is it that I, t I could just do all the time? Whether I get paid for it or not. What is it that I just really love doing? And then allow yourself to be guided to do that. How can I, how can I do that right here and right now? How can I do that in this situation? How can I do that in this community? How can I do this, that in this workplace? How can I do that in this relationship? How can I do that in this store that I'm in? I mentioned store, you know, thinking for myself, something that I am really, really, really passionate about and something that I love to do and something that I would really regret if I left the planet without having done it is shopping. Now, I knew you were going to laugh when I, <laughs> when I said that. But shopping is something that I am very, very passionate about. Not just for myself. I can shop for anybody. I, just, I love shopping. And you know, when I really started to think about service this month and, and thinking about what I'm passionate about and how I really feel about shopping and if I don't get to shop for uh, several hours, period... <laughs> <laughs> how I feel like something's missing. <laughs> but you know what? I don't just shop for me. I shop, I, 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 and a lot of it is just walking and looking, and, and when, as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about other people, and I'm thinking about, wow, this would be really great for this person. Oh, how this person would love this. And, and comparing prices, and, and oftentimes just picking up things and buying them for other people and just sending them to them. And that is something that really speaks to my heart. I'm still trying to figure out um, what, what the, the spiritual quality that's seeking expression. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is giving. One of them, you know, another is love. 
because I don't, honestly, I don't just shop for me. I, I'm, I'm, before I came here, I, I was my daughter's personal shopper and have been for years, still am. <laughs> I just don't have a lot of time to do the kind of shopping I used to do. So, but I, uh, online, if I'm online and I see something that I really like, I'll send it to her, I'll send it to a friend, I'll send it to somebody that I know because that makes my heart sing because that's something that I love to do. And she used to tell me all the time, you should be a personal shopper because you love it so much that you should shop for people. And I will. I, grocery shopping, car shopping, clothes shopping. <laughs> but do you know what? That's a way of giving service. And I'm beginning to recognize that. That uh, it, I, I couldn't love it that much if it didn't have some altruistic purpose for, for it to speak to me the way that it does then I, I know that there's a deeper meaning there. There's a deeper purpose there. And so I'm really beginning to be okay with that after all these years of trying to deny it. <laughs> I, I'm finally getting to the point where I recognize that, you know what? This is all a part of who I am. And this is all a part of how I serve. This is all a part of what I do. And so being accepting, I don't know what yours may be, your love, your passion may be, but whatever it is, you know, passion has two words for us. Follow me. Those are the words, that's the message of passion. Follow me. Follow me. And you know, when we don't live our passion, when our passion is unmet, whatever it may be, then, then that's when needs come up. And when our needs are unmet, then that's where, where we get into to, to conditions and symptoms. Because when we are not following our passion, our, passions, our passion is of God. Our passion is of our source. Our passion is what connects us to our source. And it's that divine creativity. It's that divine urge within us that's seeking expression. And the bottom line is really love. It's really love that's seeking expression through us. And that's how passion works. So God is always speaking to us. Hafiz there was, there's a poem by Hafiz that says, the God who only knows four words, come dance with me. The God who only knows four words, come dance with me. God is always saying to us, come dance with me. That's what passion is saying to us, come dance with me. Follow me. And when we follow our, our passion on the road of service, then that's when we really are blessing and being blessed. That's when we really are, are practicing that oneness that we talk so much about. That's when we really are being that place and space through which love expresses over and over and over again. When we follow the call of passion, when we follow the call of service, and when we put the two together and we serve passionately, whatever our service may look like, even if it looks funny to somebody else, like my shopping looks to somebody, to you guys, <laughs> even if it looks weird to somebody else, if that's what your passion is, if, if that's what speaks to your heart, don't let somebody else rain on your parade. Don't let somebody else make you feel uncomfortable about how you like to give and what your passion is. Because that's spirit working and in you and speaking through you according to your own uniqueness. According to your own uniqueness, not mine, according to yours. Not yours, according to mine. And so it's important for us to, to have the courage to stand in what we know to be true about ourselves. What we know speaks to our hearts. How we know we want to serve in this world. How we know we want to show up in this world. How we know we want to practice oneness in this world. How we know that we want to allow God to be all that it be in and through and as our lives. And that's what happens in our service. And that's what happens in our passionate service. And so I'm inviting you to really spend this time this week, starting out this week, to wake, waking up in the mornings with how can I serve today? How can I serve Sweet Spirit? There's a, that's a Ricky Byers Beckwith song. How can I serve Sweet Spirit? How can I serve this day? And then listen, because just as sure as we ask, Spirit will tell us, will guide us, will show us the way. 
What is it that's seeking expression through me right now? Little things. Little things. Cleaning the table, washing the tablecloths, whatever the case may be. How can I serve this community? That's our question. That's our question. And as we follow our passion, then all doors open for us. All things fall away. All the blocks fall away. Michael Beckwith used to say that pain pushes until vision pulls. Pain pushes until vision pulls. And, and I've, I've been repeating that for years because I know that's true. Pain will push us until the vision pulls us. And a, f a, a couple of months ago, there was a first, first time visitor here who uh, was also from Agape. And I said something about pain pushing until vision pulls. And he said, now Michael teaches that pain pushes until purpose pulls. Pain pushes until purpose pulls. Pain pushes until our purpose pulls us. And so that's, that's what I mean when I say that, that when we're not following our passions, passions unmet become needs. And needs unmet become conditions and symptoms. And so oftentimes, we just need to follow our heart to feel better, to move out of depression, to be happy, to be, to be joy-filled, to express more love. Following our passion, following that which speaks to our heart, and allowing that passion to lead us on the path of service. And so that's what I'm inviting you to do this month, to allow service, allow service to be your calling card this month. Passionate service. Let's join each other in that passionate service this month as we turn within in this moment in prayer. And so just taking a breath right here, right now, just knowing that God indeed is all there is. The only power, the only presence, the only mind, the only breath is God. The only activity is God. Hmm. This onlyness that is God is my very life. This onlyness that is God is the life of each of us here this day. So I rest in this knowing that this onlyness is right here, right now, right where we are in this moment. That it is everywhere present that there is no spot where it is not, that we live and we move and we have our being in this onlyness that is God. And it lives and it moves and it has its being in us. Nothing can separate us. Nothing can change that. How good it is to know this truth. From this place of awareness, I speak this word for each of us this day, a word of wholeness a word of wholeness as we open up to discover what it is in us that seeks expression as our passion, as our way of serving, as our way of expressing the onlyness that is God, as our way of opening up to allow that onlyness to express as each of us. This is where healing happens. This is where healing of any sense of separation happens. This is where healing in the body temple happens. This is where healing in our relationships and our bodies of affairs and our, and our financial affairs and whatever the case may be. On our planet, this is where healing happens. And so we, as we go deeper and deeper and deeper into our spiritual practice, into our knowingness of the presence of God and our connection with it, healing is happening all around us, all within us, everywhere we go, this healing energy is with us. Healing all with, who come within our purview. And so I'm just accepting for each of us this day, this moment, peace and love and joy and harmony and balance and compassion and passion and the knowingness 
that God is always guiding us. God is always directing us. God is always showing us the way. God is always, always, always God right where we are. How good it is to know this truth. And so this prayer goes out to anyone needing a prayer this day. Just knowing that right where each of them is, the power and the presence of God is. That healing presence of God is. The midst of every situation and circumstance. And so as I open this circle of prayer, I'll pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer today. You may speak their names silently or loud, and you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names were spoken here this day, I know that God is blessing and keeping them, lifting them up, loving them. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for the word spoken here today. Thank you for the perfect manifestation of that word. Thank you, infinite presence. Thank you, divine mother. I'll just allow it to be now. And so it is.